Welcome to Gyan Ganga. In this video, part two of VLAN emulation using virtualization techniques, we will be looking into how the hosts of the VLAN gets IP address from the DHCP server. Rest of the idea of uh, emulating the VLAN is same as what we discussed in part one. Here is the detailed experiment where we emulate the VLAN using an OVS switch. Also, we will show multiple broadcasting domains in a single switch. Hosts are emulated using uh, Linux namespace. The conceptual understanding of Linux namespace is uh, discussed in a separate uh, video whose link is uh, available in the description box. And uh, the links to the scripts which we will be using in this video is also available in the description box. Here we will go back to the physical world where uh, to have a VLAN we required a managed uh, Ethernet switch right, so like uh, Cisco CAT6K and uh, we had uh, hosts, physical host machines, right? and. Uh, uh, we used to configure the switch ports uh, uh, as uh, VLAN ports and then associate the PCH to a particular VLAN, right? The same thing can be emulated in a single host machine with less investment than what we had made here, right? Now, this is the uh, VLAN uh, set up uh, in the virtual world. world. Uh, see, we can see here the obvious bridge emulating the uh, managed uh, switch. And we have the hosts uh, which, which have been emulated by micro containers. And we have virtual Ethernet cables replacing the physical cables. The interesting part here is, even compared to the previous e experiment, the IP address is not statically assigned. We don't know what the DHCP server will assign, but we have statically assigned an IP address for the DHCP server and DHCP server will be running in the container C1 for this VLAN and it will be running in the container C3 for this VLAN. And we have already assigned the IP address 10.10.10.2 for the DHCP server in C1 10.10.20.2 for DCP server in C3 and the network uh, what uh, the IP address will be allocated will be slash 24 network. So we will uh, move on to look at the script how to uh, deploy this uh, practically. Now we have uh, created four uh, uh, micro container or network uh, namespace right and then we have created a bridge this will create the obvious bridge and these commands will uh, create virtual ethernet pair we have four of them and now we have to in, uh, interconnect the container to the obvious bridge okay the first part this will add V2 to this bridge BR0, right? Uh, using the add port uh, command of OSVC, OVS VSCTL, and we are interconnecting V1 to C1, and we are assigning the IP address statically for. Uh, the container C1 where the DHCP server will be running. We will see that how to run a DHCP server and uh, we are bringing up the interface on C1 and on the OVS bridge. Similarly, we are connecting, interconnecting C2 and BR0 in the same way, but here we are not assigning the IP address statically, right? That's the only difference. Now we are interconnecting C3 to uh, OVS uh, bridge. Again here, we are statically assigning the IP address, right, for V5. 
finally the interconnecting uh, CR4 to bridge here also we are not statically assigning the IP address finally the interesting uh, part here is we are running the DHCP server called DNS mask in the container C1 with this configuration we will see the configuration okay basically we can see the configuration here only what we have done there uh, again on the C3 okay this is the way to run uh, application which will use this micro container that means this application will use the network namespace okay unique network namespace and shares all other subsystems of the kernel with the host uh, namespace now this dns server running in this micro container will use this configuration right see the file subsystem the file system or a file subsystem will be shared with the host right see this directory is common for c1 c3 and the host right okay now we will execute this sudo exp4 setup uh, now we can see the dns mask we have two instances one using micro container c1 that is this other using micro container c3 it will only use a separate instance of network namespace but shares every other subsystem with the host hence it is running on the host now we will uh, try to get the ip address uh, before that we will see whether this ip address in the containers v3 we don't have any ip address now we will try to get the ip address v3 okay before that we can capture the uh, transactions between c2 and c3 on this interface in the previous experiment we have already shown the broadcast will not pass this vlan okay we can refer that to understand uh, how vlan work okay now we are capturing this and we are running this okay since there are a handful of transactions that takes place between dhcp client and dhcp server so it takes some time for uh, dhcp client to get ip address yes uh, now quickly we will see what is the ip address we have got oh we have got 10.10.10.8 okay oh, first we will get the dhcp address for uh, container c4 we don't have any ip address now uh, yeah we can now get the ip address So here we have it's assigning 10.10.20.8. Okay, we will now look at the configurations. Okay, VLAN 10. See in the VLAN 10 configuration, right? The DNS mass configuration we have interface equal to v1 that is dhcp server will be listening on v1 interface okay the listening address either it will be listening on two pack or this ip address okay and the dhcp range will be from 10.10.10.5 to 10.10.10.10 only six ip address 
uh, it will allocate right and the net mask is uh, slash 24 the least period is three hours similarly here the interface uh, is v5 on which the dcp server is uh, uh, listening ip address it can listen on loopback as well as the ip address the reason the binding address the dhcp range will be 20.5 to 20.10 again 6 ip address in slash 24 subnet okay the network id is 10.10.20.0 the least time is 3 hours okay so now uh, we have got ip addresses uh, at least for we have captured the uh, packets uh, for uh, this transactions we can now quickly have a look at that so we are doing cp okay we will just exp v4 we will just have a look at that. okay this is this is the transactions that has happened for uh, between the DHCP client and DHCP server. Finally, the DHCP server has offered 10.10.8. If you can look at these transactions, the infamous, the DHCP DORA transaction, discover, offer, request, and then finally, acknowledgement, right? So this is where you can see uh, the offering has been made here, okay? First, the client will send a uh, request and the offer of 10.10.8 again. Yeah, the IP address is 10.10.8, right? Offered for three hours, right? So, this is how the DHCP allocates the IP address for the requested DHCP client, right? So, now uh, we will move on. So uh, there's an interesting experiment that you can make in your uh, lab, but not in the production, right? To just uh, see how you can storm the DHCP, right? OBS Bridge supports more than 4,000 uh, uh, interfaces. That means if you are a fairly big laptop, i7, 16 GB RAM, you can create around 4000 uh, micro containers right and uh, connect this it is uh, zero right it should be a uh, wired interface connect to this OES bridge right and now all the dhcp requests will go to your lab uh, server and <clears throat> you can see all 4000 hosts requesting for the dhcp uh, requesting dhcp to allocate the IP address. So in this way, the DHCP server can be overwhelmed with just one host of yours, right? So do it in your lab. Carefully don't try to experiment in the production uh, environment. So friends, uh, that's all uh, we have uh, in this session. Hope you have enjoyed this experiment till we meet you in the next session with some interesting experiment happy learning take care and thank you